in the Seagram's block of uh, of uh, Oshawa, Ontario. I'm, I'm an idol. Don't be scared, homie. I got mine. Okay, first of all, the world is smiling at you. The wrestling business is smiling at you. And don't you frown back on it. Surprise, surprise, motherfucker. The king is back. The man to howl out. The man with the power. Too sweet to be sour. Dylan Boker. All right, I am talking to the chosen defender. Has a big fight coming up against Michael Hay. It goes at Unified MMA 33 for the vacant Bantamweight title. And it's going to be a big fight going there December 15th. How's it going? I'm talking to Noah Ali. I'm doing amazing. Thanks for having me. I feel great. Yeah, no, that's awesome to hear, man. And I was noticing on your record, you had a few fights at featherweight, but the bulk of your record, you know, was in that Bantamweight class there. So was it a trial and error sort of a thing that made you sort of go to the Bantamweight class where you're thinking, okay, this is like the best I feel sort of thing? No, well, I was I was always uh, a Bantamweight, but for my pro debut, I took on two days notice and it was against a 45er. So I just cut to 45. And then uh, when I fought Louis Sweat at 45, we couldn't find anyone to fight me at 35, so we just kind of took what we could because, uh, you know, I just wanted to fight. So um, I believe those were my two at 45. The other ones that were at 40 or 45, they were short notice, like catch weights for my opponent. But um, no, I'm definitely a 35er. And and now that I've changed my diet, I'm, I'm basically full vegan. Uh, it's made the weight cut super easy now, so... I'm definitely staying at 135 now. No, that's cool. I mean, definitely shows the fighting spirit, though, willing to take on these bigger guys on short notice. But I also wanted to touch on the fight you had with Jesse Brock there because, I mean, that was a title fight as well, and that went the full five rounds, 25 minutes there. It was a bantamweight title fight as well. So do you th- even in a losing effort there, do you feel like the experience you gained from that fight will you know, give you valuable information going into this upcoming title fight here? Oh, 110%. Um you know, I, I only lost that fight because not uh, that I wasn't as good. It's because I just kind of made the wrong decisions in the later rounds, and I didn't switch to the – like, I didn't follow the proper game plan. But, man, I learned so much off that fight that, you know, if I could go back and, like, not take the fight so I didn't have the the loss, I wouldn't do it. I would still take the loss because I learned a ton off that, and uh, I definitely know that's going to help me in this title fight. No, yeah, because I imagine the pacing and certain considerations are altogether different going in there for a championship fight. So it seems like something you don't really know what you're getting into until you actually do it. So there's probably a lot of confidence going into this fight in Edmonton. Yeah, absolutely. And like Jesse Brock, he he's a he's a Boise State wrestler. You know, he's got like, well, they claimed he had endless cardio, but you know, in the fourth and fifth, he was starting to get tired. And uh, you know, those are stylistically, those are the toughest matches are these grinding wrestling uh, opponents. So, you know, I've already been through that, and uh, I know Mike Hayes is going to try and take me down, maybe even jump guard, and I'm going to get back up, and I'm going to take him into the deeper rounds, and we're going to see how that plays out. And it seems like a big card, too. I mean, this is a big title fight here, but it's one of three title fights that's going to be taking place on that Royal Palace card there. You know, it's going to be on Fight TV, big weigh-ins at West Edmonton Mall. Are you excited for all of that surrounding factor, or does that not really play into it at all, and you're just, like, tunnel vision to the fight sort of thing? Mm, yeah, no, that doesn't really matter to me. Um, you know, it's cool. It's extra for all that stuff. But, hey, you could have us weighing in the back alley, and uh, and you know what I mean, and just have the venue in a gym, and it would kind of be the same thing for me. So, um, you yeah. know, it's cool. I, li- I like it when they have uh, cool things like that, like Wayne's at the mall and nice venues. It's definitely a bonus. But to me, you know, fight's a fight. No, that's a good mentality, man. I dig that. But you fought for a lot of the big promotions all throughout Canada. I mean, Havoc FC, Hard Knocks, King of the Cage, Rumble in the Cage as well. And you were supposed to fight Matt Spicek in 2016 for Unified. So it must be cool to be, you know, finally making this debut for Unified. Seems like kind of a long time coming. Yeah, you know, I've, that's definitely one of the cards I haven't been on, and, and they are getting better. Their matches are getting awesome. So, uh, yeah, you know, it's an honor to be on there. Um, when I was supposed to fight Matt Spizak, I, I I actually uh, had an eye injury that was, like, acting up. And, you know, I fought with uh, with some pretty serious injuries. I fought, like, super sick, like, three times. Uh, but that was that was one where it's like, man, if I lose my vision, like, I'm not fighting, right? So... I took oh, yeah. a lot of that fight just for uh, safety concerns. But, yeah, I'm super happy that uh, that Sonny ha- has me back and has given me the opportunity to uh, become champion there in Edmonton. 
No, man. I mean, your vision is paramount, and I'm glad to hear everything seems to be you know, working out with that there. That's a very key thing. But the fight with Michael Hay coming up here, I sort of wanted to touch on what you think about your opponent here. Seems like he has a strong jujitsu acumen. What are your overall thoughts on him as a mixed martial artist, though? Well, you know, he does. There's not much video. Like, I tried looking up Goat Fight Live, their their website's down. And, like, I went on YouTube, and he's got, like, two videos up there. And it's, like, from someone that's, like, so far away. So you can't really see much. So uh, there's not much uh, video on him. But I know he lo- like he'll jump guard to get the submission. Uh, I watched him fight Louis Grover on World Series of Fighting. Um, so you know it's it's a good matchup. His strength is jujitsu, and uh, one of my strengths is jujitsu as well. Uh, I was training at Champions Creed. I actually just switched teams uh, this last week. And um, but I mean you know I was at Champions Creed for eight and a half years. Uh, they have Brian and Sheila Bird. They're both black belts, and you know that's definitely the strength of that gym. So my jujitsu will not be lacking, and now that I'm training with more of a striking slash, slash MMA gym with a lot of wrestling, um, you know, I'm definitely going to neutralize his jujitsu, and it's going to be a stand-up fight is how I see it. Okay, so whereabouts are you training now? Sorry, like a post-Champions Creed there. Whereabouts are you now? Now uh, I do uh, my – I go to T.O. Fistle Boxing for my, for my pure boxing, and then uh, – I train under Jake Peacock and Dunamis um, Muay Thai and kickbox. Or sorry, it's Dunamis kickboxing and boxing. And then I do my jujitsu and MMA at uh, Cardinal MMA. Okay, right on. Yeah, because I noticed you'd been a teacher there at Champions Creed for quite a few years, and you were teaching the kids there. I was going to actually ask how that sort of informed your own personal approaches to being an MMA fighter. Because I don't know, I've taught certain things like not martial arts based but teaching things i've found has reshaped you know my own perspectives and methods in you know what i'm doing there so how is teaching reshaped and i guess bettered you as a mixed martial artist if at all well you know as far as a fighter uh, i've come to learn that teaching has its pros and cons um you know if you're teaching all the time then you're not training right but, yeah okay um but you know but when you do teach you see, like, you know, you see mistakes that you wouldn't wouldn't usually see, and, you know, you have to question yourself and question what's not working. So, you know, you end up learning a lot of things as well, so that's the positive side to it. But um, if I had to pick one or the other, like, if you're trying to be in the UFC, you're trying to be the best in the world, I think you should just be focusing on fighting, and you should have coaches watching you. Um, so, I don't know, everyone's kind of got their own thing. I taught heavily for a few years. And then I kind of gave it up over the past year and I was only teaching a little bit. And now I'm just back to being the student and, you know, I'm loving it. I got my coaches watching over me and I'm just here to learn. You know, I'm 32 now. I I, like, I want to fight till I'm 40, but uh, you know, I'll I'll be blessed if I'm able to do that, but you know, I'm 32. So I I don't, I feel like, you know, it's kind of like in this next few years, it's kind of like a do or die thing. So I really need to focus on training and just have a, coaches that I trust and I want around me and uh you know they just help me out and you know we'll see where this journey ends up yeah I know sometimes you got to be like kind of like focused on just your own efforts when you're actually getting out there and competing and stuff like that and again who's to say you can't get back into coaching at a later juncture you know post fighting right so well absolutely that's the other thing is like I plan on opening my gym because I love martial arts so I plan on, right on. My, own, my own gym but only after I'm done fighting so maybe when I'm like 40 and a half right <laughs> but uh yeah yeah so once i'm done fighting i'm definitely gonna open my own gym i love it but um you know until then i kind of not saying i'll never teach again um but i definitely want to be the student for uh for the next while here no i definitely get that and you've had a pretty exciting career so far i mean five submissions and one ko and the nine wins you have there you've been going since uh that june 2010 amateur debut there and they were talking about your favorite techniques and you're talking about, Oh yeah, I, I dig the flying knee and stuff like that. But I thought it was curious in one of your interviews, you admitted to being a bit tentative in certain fights as the result of a concussion. And there was also some elements of, you know, being tense as if it was more of like a, a street fight dynamic. So I'm wondering if in this camp, you've made certain efforts to maybe change your mental game going into this title fight, like maybe like a sports psychologist or even just analyzing your own processes through like metacognition or something like that. Well, um, I'm just, you know, I think that's just coming with every fight. Uh, I have not spoken with a sports psychologist, but I actually, I'm pretty, I'm pretty good friends with one of them. So I guess that's something I should do. But um, no, it's like, you know, I kind of grew up with the wrong kind of people and we were always kind of street fighting and doing stupid stuff like that. And uh, 
so yeah, that that's kind of one of my problems. Is like I, I do really well training and I do really well sparring, but when I get in there, I'm really tense and I, I'm not able to be as loose and as as uh, you know as fluid as I could be. So that's just something I think that that's, that's going to come with me keeping on fighting and uh, and you know I just. I'm starting to get the confidence back after my concussion. You know, I, I definitely didn't want to get hit before my concussion. It was like, man, let's bang. I don't care what happens. Like, you know what I mean? Like, let's just throw down. Um, but I need to go back to my old ways. Cause that's when I was doing well. And that's the type of fighter that I am. I'm not like a crisp technical striker. Um, I like to get in there and throw down and, um, you know, and throw heavy punches and not really be so tentative about not getting hit because if you're just so worried about not getting hit and you're not hitting them it's like well what are we doing here right no i get that and that's good because i mean i feel like a concussion would definitely be like a jarring sort of thing where you're maybe going to be a bit more wary or more calculated with it sort of thing i also noticed you had a couple pro boxing wins on your record there one being in 2014 but the other was earlier this year so has that informed your overall mma game and are you going to maybe pursue more pro boxing going forward Mm, you know, I, I'm just taking because uh, my good uh, my good friend and coach Eric De Guzman at Tio Fista, he he has cards all the time, so I kind of have the connection to get fights when uh, the MMA is a little bit low. So you know, I don't I don't have big plans for boxing, but I'll definitely do it again. And uh, but you know, if I'm able to keep getting these MMA fights in, I'm just gonna keep fighting MMA and uh, and see how it goes. But uh, I'll definitely box again, just not really any any concrete plans on it. Yeah, no, I guess I wager if things go well in this fight or go as you're looking to have them go, you're going to want to be defending the unified title going forward, so probably be more busy with MMA than anything. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, as long as I'm, I'm healthy, I want to fight. And like I said, I just want to get the fights in, fight good guys, and learn and get better and just see how the cookie crumbles. Yeah, no doubt. And for, as far as, like, getting inspired, like, while you're actually in training and stuff like that, do you listen to certain types of music? Like, there are there certain, like, genres or artists that really get you in the right headspace there? Well, um, you know, I, I grew up on rap music, you know, Tupac, Biggie, all, all that kind of stuff. Um, right on. But, so that's the kind of music I like listening to before I go train and spar. But I'm also trying to switch that up. Like, I listen to a lot of classical music now, and... Um, and more like meditative, like a uh, flow state music. So, right. um, I don't know. I, I kind of find they help you, you know, in different ways, but the rap music definitely gets me pumped up. And I also grew, grew up like listening to like, uh, like hardcore, like rave music, like uh Vanderlei Silva style. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, some Duraday Sandstorm type of stuff. Yeah, exactly. And you know, I haven't walked out to any, any crazy rave songs yet. So that's something I might want to do. Um, so yeah, you know, I'm just, I'm pretty open to the music. If I like it, I like it. But like I said, in the past year here, I started listening to classical music, and I would have never guessed that before. So, No, but I get that, though. It's, it's like cool music to have, so you can sort of like undulate with it, I guess, and more have like a calm, relaxed state of mind and sort of focus on more of like a calculated approach. But I also see the merit of playing something like, you know, rap music and stuff like that. That definitely gets me fired up as well. But is there anything you wanted to add here as we're wrapping up, man? You've been good with your time. No, I'd just like to say uh, thanks to you for the interview and uh, thanks to all my sponsors for supporting me and uh, thanks to my new team and coaches for uh, bringing me in and giving me a warm welcome. It means a lot to me. And uh, yeah, just thanks for everything. Can't wait to see you guys uh, on the 15th. Yeah, I know it's going to be great. I'm definitely going to be cage side for that. Checking out Michael Hay against Noah Ali. Unified MMA 33, great card there. And yeah, Chosen Defender going to be vying for the vacant Bantamweight title there. Again, man, big thanks for all the time you've lent me. And best of luck in the fight. And I'll see you there at the event. Okay, thanks, Bill. And take care. All right, you too, man. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.